Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another video. So I get several mails and messages uh, asking me why do I actually cover mostly only Arch Linux on the channel. And the reason for that is, as you probably already know, it's because I can build Arch Linux from scratch the way I want to. It's like putting together little pieces the way you want to. And the other reason is because we have the AUR, the Arch User Repository, which is a huge repository where you find most of the packages you're looking for. So if you are wondering where do I find this package, chances are on the AUR it's available. Having said that, it does not mean actually that I'm not looking at other distributions. So for a start, here we are on Ubuntu 21.04. Let me pull up here the settings so that I can show you. And let's go here to About. Now, Ubuntu 21.04 came out a few weeks ago and at the beginning it had some issues if you were trying to upgrade the system. Now, the issue has been solved, so you should be able to upgrade just fine. And as you can see here, it's installed on my main machine because I wanted to try out how it's actually working for my workflow. Everything here is about personal experience, nothing else. And as you can see here, we have Ubuntu 21.04 which is using still the GNOME version 3.38.5. So it's not GNOME 40, it's not the latest version of GNOME, and that's to be expected in a distribution like Ubuntu, which is aiming more at stability, and it's not a rolling release. Now, the positive thing here with uh, the GNOME Shell 3.38.5 is that if you're using already several extensions in your system, then they will be working fine, where else in GNOME 40, they are not yet fully compatible. So for example, here you can see I have the extension dash to dock, which is one of the most popular. And it's not yet fully compatible with GNOME 40. There are some workarounds that work. For example, I've seen on Fedora and also on Arch Linux, you can install it from the AUR, but it's not yet fully compatible with other distributions on the GNOME 40 shell. So having the GNOME shell version 3.38.5 is a great advantage here if you're using extensions that are not yet supported in GNOME 40. So this gives you a little bit more stability on your workflow if you're used to work in a certain way with certain extensions, for example. And the other thing is that it comes also by default with the Wayland Display Server. Now, of course, you can always choose Xorg in the login screen if you want to do that. But the default is Wayland. That means if you have multiple displays, like in my case here, and you're using different displays with different DPIs, like I do, for example, I have a 4K display and a 1080p display where I'm recording now, then Wayland is great because on GNOME it's displaying correctly and it's scaling correctly on both displays without you having to do anything. Now, if we go here under displays, for example, you will see here I have two displays. This is the 4K display here. This is 1080p display. And now this is actually my primary display. So on GNOME, on Wayland, you can define actually the primary display, which is a great thing to have, which is something which is missing right now in KDE. Hopefully it's going to change this in the next release of KDE because I think, I believe it's important to have this option, especially if you have a laptop to the side, actually, which is your primary display. And with Wayland here, I can decide, of course, to scale the display uh, differently and it's going to be displayed properly on both displays. So this is a great option if you have multiple displays with different DPIs, for example. Now, the other thing which is very important here in Ubuntu 21.04 is that it's using Pipewire by default. Now, Fedora, I believe, was the first distribution using Pipewire by default. Now we have also Ubuntu. And the advantage here in having Pipewire is that if you're using OBS Studio like I'm using now, for example, now granted I'm using here the beta version of OBS, now we are at uh, release candidate six, and it's gonna be probably available soon in the main repositories. Now with the new version of OBS, you will be able to record your display with Wayland, which is actually something that many people which are making recordings for the display have been waiting for for a long time. So this is great to have here in Ubuntu 21.04. Now, another thing I would like to show you here, if I pull up the terminal, let me increase the font size here and I'll type in uname-r. So Ubuntu 21.04 is using the 5.11 kernel. Now this is not the latest kernel, but it's almost the latest kernel. I think the latest kernel is now 5.12, but 5.11 will give you compatibility with most of the newer hardware. So it's a great kernel. It's not, of course, what you would find on a rolling release. And that's, of course, the big difference between something like Ubuntu and Arch Linux, for example, where in Arch you have basically a rolling release. So you will install it once and then you will have always the newest version if you update the system regularly, of course. Whereas Ubuntu, it's a point release. So we have now Ubuntu 21.04 and probably in a couple of months we will have the next release as well. And probably then we will have also the GNOME Shell 40 by the time that most extensions have been updated to the GNOME 40 shell. Now let me clean up the terminal. Now let me type in lsblk. 
and you can see here I have several devices in this system. Now the one actually the disk where Ubuntu is installed is NVMe 1 and 1. This is an SSD and of course to install Ubuntu I use the Ubiquiti installer which comes already by default in Ubuntu and I actually went ahead and partitioned the disk manually here. I created actually a second EFI partition because I have another system installed here. I created here also a swap partition and also a root partition. I didn't create a home partition because I usually don't use it and the installation was smooth and I had no issues with it. Now you can see here also we have some loop devices. This has to do with the SnapD service and SNAPS, in generally speaking. Now SNAPS is something which some people like and some people don't. Now as you probably already know, SNAPS are like boxes where the application is basically packaged in it. I would say it's the same concept like app images and flat packs. Now the thing is actually here in Ubuntu, I'm not actually using SNAPS that much and that is because the performance is still a little bit too slow in my experience. I'm not using that many boxed applications like flat packs. Uh, I use actually, for example, here Spotify and I use also Caden Live in this case here. But in my experience, at least until now, I have to say flat packs actually performed better than snaps so far. Snaps are a little bit slower and so that's why I tend not to use them at all. Now there are several guides also on the internet, if you google you will see it and they explain you how you can actually remove Snap completely from Ubuntu. If you want to do that you can just google it and you will find it. So this is something that I've been experiencing. I don't know how it's your experience with Snaps, if you use them or not. If you use them let me know in the comments below if your experience is actually different than mine. But in my experience until now I had better experience with flat packs than Snaps anyway. Now let me clean up again the terminal and type in NeoFetch which I installed, it's not pre-installed by default. So I chose actually the standard installation when I installed Ubuntu here and it comes with around 1860 packages. And I have 14 flag packs, these are actually Caden Live and Spotify here with the dependencies. And so this is also one of the difference between a distribution like Arch for example, where you can decide the packages you want to install. So you can just really install whatever you need and everything else you can let it out. What else of course in a distribution like Ubuntu or Fedora or other distributions, you will have a package. Of course there are also advantages here because when you install Ubuntu you will have for example Samba, NFS working out of the box, no problem. You have many things which a user will probably use already pre-installed and working out of the box which is great. Whereas in Arch Linux of course you will have to build everything yourself. So it's really a matter of personal preference here. Now I've been using Ubuntu 21.04 now since 10 days here on my main machine and I've been very happy with it. It's very stable, it doesn't have that many updates every day like in Arch for example so you don't have to worry about updating too much the system and it's using also a little older version of the shell so that means if you're using certain extensions you will have a more stable experience here with Ubuntu 21.04. So the fact that we have here Wayland and also Pipewire in my workflow here for what I do on the computer, it's great because it allows me to, like I said before, having multiple displays with scaling and also being able to record the screen using the Wayland display server, which is absolutely great. Now going forward, I'm going to explore also other distributions just to broaden a little bit the horizon here on the channel as well. But don't worry, I will still of course cover Arch Linux and the monthly installations of Arch will always be there. So if you're using Ubuntu 21.04 or you upgraded to 21.04, let me know how it's working for you and how you like it. And if you like the video, you can give it a thumbs up if you want to. And if you want, you can of course also subscribe to the channel. That always helps me out. Now, if you want to support also my work, you can do so by becoming a patron. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I'll see you very soon in the next one.